This is the Flurion QX80 micro quad. Uh, comes with a FPV backpack right here. Uh, integrated uh, camera and video transmitter. Uh, comes in this small box with uh, instructions. So it's only a two-sided sheet of paper but it's got uh, plenty of information it's got the uh, FC pinout and the VTX channel map so that's uh, that's pretty pretty good information uh, the FC PDB looks pretty clean uh, the soldering looks pretty good. On the PCV itself, the components are they're pretty clean. I, I didn't see any any bad soldering. Uh, and this one's based, uh, I believe, it was on a SPF Racing F3 Evo. Uh, it says Happy Model right there, F3 Evo. So that's a should be a pretty good FC. The frame it, it doesn't use any fasteners. It's all put together, just snapped into place. Uh, the individual pieces are all just snapped in there. Uh, seems pretty good. It doesn't seem that it would come apart that easy. Uh, it's fairly solid for the uh, for the forces involved here. Uh, should be strong enough. If you do press it, though, I mean you can certainly twist it, but uh, with the force of the propeller, shouldn't shouldn't cause any shouldn't cause any major twist. I I think we'll see. We'll see how it flies. There's a couple of things that concern me here. It's uh, these uh, PCBs are basically exposed here. So in the event of a crash, uh, you may end up pushing pushing the antenna into the uh, FC and causing a short circuit so that would not be a good thing so of course we can find a solution for that it would probably be just uh, using some shrink tubing I got this one from Hobby King this one's the uh, the clear one. It's the lightest, the lightest one. It's the thinnest. So you can slip a couple of pieces once you solder the. Oh, by the way, this is a. Uh, this one comes receiver ready. So it doesn't have a receiver. You have to add your own receiver. I'm gonna use. Uh, this uh, eye range, so this is pretty tiny. Uh, so you want to use small one as possible. Anyway, uh, back to the uh, protecting the FC. You can use this shrink tubing. Uh, just slip it in there like so one right there and then you can slip the other one from the other side Like 
so and then you know you of course would cut it cut it to size and then uh, you know put it back there like that so you shrink it put it back so now we're protected yeah you know, in the case of a crash you end up hitting it right there it's now protected so that's something everybody should do or you know find some other way of uh, covering here the top uh, I mean there's several ways you can use uh, conformal co coating liquid tape uh, I don't know just a piece of tape anything just don't don't leave it bare The antenna, the antenna wire, it's, they, I don't know, they went with the uh, semi-rigid coax cable. This is fairly stiff, I mean, it's, you can bend it and it, you know, it'll, it'll remain in that shape, but it's not, it's, it's pretty stiff. So I don't know if that's a good thing. Uh, doesn't have any give here so but I mean the the camera it's, uh, it's it's got it's got some motion movement there when if you crash so so hopefully that you know it won't it won't cause any major stress there and break off any parts should be okay I think uh, also went ahead and and I added a piece of uh, foam tape there so that the camera can rest on the foam tape and not on the uh, carbon fiber because you may you may have some uh, you may cause some short circuit in uh, there's some resistors there I don't know, you know so you want to you don't want to touch any carbon fiber so that piece of uh, that piece of foam tape there uh, keeps the uh, keeps the make, keeps the camera a little bit higher keeps it from touching the frame the shrink wrap to protect the PCB from the camera in the event of a crash and this thing short circuiting the EFC I went uh, farther in, all the way right here, so that when I uh, hit hit it with the heat gun, it'll it'll shrink and st uh, but still cover uh, the uh, PCB on the FC, so nothing nothing will be exposed. Let's see if that works. Uh, yeah, that's that's better. Nothing's exposed. I always like to check for uh, shorts uh, using the continuity function of, on the multimeter. So it's always it's always good to check because you never know uh, if you might have you might have moved some wires or some some wires c could be shorted from the factory. So it's always always good to check. So that's uh, negative to negative. So right here, positive to negative, nothing. 
I get a little bit paranoid about short circuits, so I went ahead and uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of shrink wrap on the camera itself. So it's protected. Uh, you never know in a crash, it might dislodge and touch some of this uh, carbon fiber. Uh, Murphy's Law. What I did uh, to go there, I just cut I cut a little notch on the shrink wrap and then applied a small amount of heat so that it doesn't uh, shrink too much and then end up tearing. So you can still access the uh, the switches. Just use a, a needle. Uh, to poke through the shrink wrap and you can s switch the, the channels that way. This one's a little bit tricky. better protection yeah receivers are there so uh, you know that also protects the FC but still you know if you have the receiver there the lows might still hit this component so it's a good idea to shrink wrap it I think It comes with the, uh, the rubber bands. Uh, there's two lipos, uh, two batteries, single cell, 600 milliamp hours. Uh, it doesn't say what the uh, seed rating these are, but it should be enough for these. We'll see. If not, uh, you could also use uh, those Hobby King. Nanotechs, I think they have a <coughs> they have a similar size one of these that a lot of people like. Uh, they also give you some extra two-sided tape because that's for the FC. Uh, two sets of props. Uh, this one I believe is a prop tool, so you can remove the prop after you put it. Uh, with that. It's carbon fiber. And they give you a balance charging lead which seems to be in series so you would charge this uh, as a 2S There. Always check the polarity. So you would use something like this type of chargers. Uh, these are fairly cheap. I think they're I don't know eight to twelve bucks. Uh, and then you just charge it to uh, the balance lead. Like that. So you're charging on two S. Charge two batteries at once. And these are these are pretty pretty decent uh, on 2S they'll charge uh, at uh, 1.2 amps max so it should, uh, should uh, charge them fairly fast uh, these are the other batteries uh, 35 to 70 C 750 milliamps, so slightly larger than these. 15.2 grams. Three more grams. And 
the check polarity on these because I know some of these would come reverse so you gotta carefully see they are reverse so you gotta switch the wires before you use them before you use these uh, nanotechs This is the camera test. Uh, I was uh, pretty pleased with the uh, quality of the image and the light handling capability of the camera. And as you can see, it handles uh, sun. You know, like uh, this time of the the afternoon, uh, the sun is low, so it's it's one of the the most difficult conditions for a camera to handle. And uh, this little camera handled it pretty well. Uh, you can see the exposure, it's pretty good. Uh, there's hardly any washing out of the image, you know, that's when everything goes like kind of too, too bright, like whitish. Um, the shadow areas, uh, you can still see some detail. The only uh, complaint I have is the, the and that's most of the cameras in this size they, they use uh, wide lenses so uh, I wish they they all came with uh, an equivalent to the 2.8 lens that we that are used in the like the H HS uh, 1177 you know the regular uh, the regular cameras that we use for larger copters but overall it's it's pretty good camera uh, handles light pretty well These are some of the first uh, test flights I did on this uh, uh, QX80. I was uh, quite surprised at how well the uh, the little copter handled. Uh, there was some wind uh, during this time I flew, so it wasn't really optimal flying conditions for this size of copter. But uh, you see, as you can see, it uh, it tracks very well. And uh, it gets it gets fast. It gets fast enough. I mean, of course, it doesn't have as much uh, thrust as the bigger copters, but uh, you learn you learn to uh, to know what you have on reserve. Um, uh, it does, you know, it does pretty well. It's fun, fun little copter to fly. You just gotta get you know adjust to the uh, to the way it fl uh, it handles to the power it has. Uh, and of course, if it's too windy. It, yeah, you really can't fly when it's it's too windy. Uh, you can do rolls, uh, you know, but you do need to, you know, get some speed and maybe um, maintain the speed when you do that. Uh, this is with Clean Flight. Uh, I just installed Beta Flight, and uh, I'm gonna try that next. Uh, I've read that it's much better than Clean Flight. So I'm hoping it'll fly even better. Uh, as it is, it's pretty good.